Hi everyone. In this video I will introduce you to the PhD simulation resonance. You will use it in one of the uh, assignments in Unit 5 um, in the online physics course. Anyway, you can see it here in front of you on the screen. Um, this is this is what you will see when uh, the simulation opens for you. And um, I guess there are two two places here on, on the screen where your attention needs to be. Over here in the center we have the, the resonator. Um, I guess this is the resonator. It's a mass attached to a spring uh, and here is a, basically a, a thing that, that forces the vibrations on this spring and on the resonator. And you can change the, the forcing frequency, the frequency with which this um, vibrating device was going to be uh, forcing vibrations on the resonator. Uh, on the right you can see different settings um, that you can change and uh, that change the natural frequency of the resonator. You can actually use more resonators uh, than one but we're just going to use one. You can play with the simulation and look at uh, different resonators and set set several different resonators and, and with different um, masses and spring content spring constants. Um, for the assignments though you're just going to use one resonator and the the settings that I want you to use for the for the assignment the resonator settings they're shown in a picture um, that you that you can see in the in the assignment. Uh, for now I'm just going to leave the leave the settings the mass of the resonator and the you know how strong the spring is the spring constant at the default settings um, as well as the damping constant which is I guess uh, how you can regulate the friction in the system. Uh, what I'm going to do though I'm going to turn gravity on um, and uh, I'm gonna put some rulers in here which is what I would like you to do um, in the assignment as well uh, to use the rulers. Um, set the ruler, one ruler to be at the base of the resonator this is basically the equilibrium position, the position in which the resonator is uh, without any vibrations being forced on the resonator. And then you will use the second resonator to to measure the amplitude created in the resonator um, when it's vibrating at, at its natural frequency. So let's, um, I guess the objective of this little exercise and demonstration is to sort of show you how you can uh, use the simulation to experimentally determine the natural frequency of this particular resonator with these settings of the resonator. Um, for the assignment you're going to use different settings uh, so your natural frequency is going to be different from the one that I'm going to um, experimentally find here. So let's tr uh, turn the driver, the the device that is going to force the vibrations on the oscillate on the, on the resonator. Let's turn it on. Um, you can you can see there is a setting in here for the amplitude at which this driver is uh, is moving um, but you just leave that at the default settings um, anyway so as you can see the resonator started to to oscillate to move and the oscillations have a certain amplitude the amplitude can be you know sort of measured by moving um, this ruler down and you can see this ruler shows us where the the bottom part of the oscillator was or the resonator was uh, at the beginning so the natural uh, place where it was and uh, we want to place to, to find the amplitude at which it's vibrating um, you want to place the second ruler um, also at the base because it's going to be from the base to the base at the highest um, displacement from the natural position and you can see that it's kind of tough to find because it's, it's happening rather fast. So you can slow this down. So use this um, this setting over here to slow down the simulation and then you can move the ruler so that it goes to the so it coincides with the with the bottom of that of that oscillator pretty much like that. Okay. So I can now uh, tell that this uh, resonator is now uh, moving at an amplitude from this value to this value. Which this is about 7, uh, whatever the units are, 
it would be centimeters, probably centimeters. Uh, so from 7 to 15, which is a difference about 8 centimeters, so it looks like the amplitude um, of this resonator is now, what did I say? Uh, from 7 to 15, so about 8 units. Um, now you can change the frequency of the driver and and see how the amplitude changes. Does the amplitude be become larger or does it become smaller? And we want to achieve resonance. At resonance, we're going to be forcing the the driver is going to be for forcing vibrations on the resonator at its natural frequency, which should produce the largest um, amplitude, the the strongest vibrations in the resonator. I guess you know that's the important part of that. Um, to see whether you match the natural frequency of the resonator or not is basically by looking at how big this amplitude here is. The larger the amplitude, the closer you are to the natural frequency. And once you, you know, you basically you play with it and and, uh, and you try to find, you can move this handle in here to change the frequency. And uh, as I'm looking at it now, I can see that it resonates less. Right, so this frequency definitely doesn't produce the the largest vibrations, um, and you can also see that when when it goes through this sort of change, so it goes from large vibrations to small vibrations. You know that the the frequency you are forcing is not a natural frequency. So let let's move it to here. And, uh, again, we can see that the the amplitude of the vibrations changes, and uh, the resonator doesn't resonate very nicely. This is definitely not the natural frequency either. Nope. Small vibrations. Small vibrations. So basically you, you play with this and see if you can get it to vibrate a lot. And if you, the, the frequency, when you get to that large uh, vibrations, you know that you're close to the natural frequency. It looks like it was set the default settings were uh, very close to the natural frequency or at the natural frequency because I didn't move this frequency handle at all and we were getting the largest uh, vibrations, the, the largest amplitude of the vibrations. So I guess we are now back to where we were at the beginning. Now let me just move this down to see whether I can get it to vibrate even more. Oh the vibrations are getting smaller let's go let's try to get this to 95.95 and uh, let's see what vibrations we get from that okay the vibrations are definitely smaller let's go back to 1 hertz And um, definitely, you know, from just playing a little bit with this uh, change, changing frequency in here, um, my guess is that the natural frequency of this particular resonator with these settings in here um, is one one hertz. So this one hertz would be the the natural mode of vibration of this particular resonator. Um, usually, uh, each object has more than one. Um, natural mode of vibration and they're usually just a whole number multiples of each other so if one hertz uh, is a natural frequency then it could b the the you know the the next um, natural frequency of this uh, resonator would be some kind of a multiple of one hertz so you could try then and, and see whether it's two hertz or three hertz or four hertz or five hertz I don't know how far you can go with this frequency in here uh, we're changing the frequency but if one hertz is a natural mode of vibration, there's a good chance that it's going to have another natural mode of vibration, which is going to be just a whole number multiple. It's not necessarily twice as much or three times as much, but it's a whole number multiple of of, uh, of one hertz. Anyway, so uh, for the simulation or for the exercise that you're going to complete, you're going to use the simulation with different settings. And what I want you to find out is the natural frequency at those particular settings and also try to estimate the the amplitude the largest displacement from the uh, natural 
um, position from the equilibrium position of the of the resonator when it's vibrating at its natural frequency and um, together with answers to other uh, questions posted in the assignment you will then um, then upload uh, those measured values oh one more thing one last thing I want you to take a screenshot so once it's um, vibrating at its natural frequency and try to get it uh, maybe slow it down and try to get the screenshot so it shows the highest displacement and you can even pause it like this yeah so when it's paused uh, at its highest displacement and that will nicely show the the amplitude that then take the the screenshot and upload the screenshot um, together with with your work for that assignment and from that screen screen screenshot I'm gonna be able to tell whether you kept the assigned settings as well as I will be able to see here the the frequency that you chose to be um, the natural frequency of that of the resonator.